Okay, I'm going to make a short video describing the mechanism of action of chemotrypsin. So first of all, I'll just explain what you're looking at. This bluey green thing is the active site of the enzyme chemotrypsin. Okay, this is chemotrypsin here. And in the active site of the enzyme is are three amino acids. There is an aspartate, a histidine and a serine. Okay, and these three residues form the catalytic triad. So tri because there's three amino acids involved here. Now, aspartate is the 102nd amino acid in chemotrypsin, so it's called aspartate 102. Histidine is the 57th amino acid and serine's the 195th. But the structure of chemotrypsin means that these three amino acids are brought into close proximity to each other. So that means they're close together in the 3D structure. And there's one other amino acid you need to know about, which is a glycine. So the function of chemotrypsin is to cleave proteases. Okay, it's to cleave proteins, sorry. It's a protease. An enzyme that cleaves proteins is a protease. And here I've got a short section of polypeptide chain. Okay, so this is a polypeptide chain. And you can see there's a carbonyl group, the carbon joining to the oxygen. Here's a glycine. There's a peptide bond, another carbonyl group. And then you've got a second amino acid in this peptide, which is phenylalanine. Okay. In reality, this could be much bigger. This could be quite a large peptide. Now, chemotrypsin um, cleaves certain pro polypeptides. And it can cleaves polypeptides immediately after a phenylalanine group or another bulky residue. Okay, And it does this because it has a hydrophobic pocket. Okay, This is the hydrophobic pocket here. And that's where phenylalanine sits. Another feature that you need to know about that's important for this catalysis is the oxyanion hole. That's the oxyanion hole there. Okay. So the first thing that's going to happen in this reaction is that the peptide is going to position itself into the enzyme. So the peptide here is the substrate. Chemotrypsin is the enzyme and the peptide is positioned in the hydrophobic pocket of chemotrypsin. And it's this positioning that's so important for this reaction to occur. Okie dokie. So, what happens? Well, what happens is a proton is moved and this allows the reaction to occur. So on these models you can see the red is oxygen the grey is carbon, the blue is nitrogen, but the protons aren't actually shown. So for the sake of this um, demonstration, I'm going to use this little yellow blob to represent a protein, proton. Sorry. So the first step is that histidine 57 catalyzes the removal of a protein proton from serine 195. Okay, so the proton is removed from serine 195 and it, that can only occur because it's within the active site of this enzyme and because this aspartate residue is stabilizing the histidine. Okay, these things all need to happen for this reaction to occur. This means that serine 195 can now act as a nucleophile and it attacks the carbonyl carbon okay so the carbonyl group is an oxygen bonded to a carbon and on this peptide chain the carbonyl group is here so what happens is that there is a bond formed between this oxygen and serine and this carbonyl carbon okay then Histidine donates this 
um, proton to the nitrogen of the sessile peptide, peptide bond, okay? So I told you that this um, peptide, the red bond, is the sessile bond. So what happens is the proton gets donated here and the end result of that is that you have a C terminal product, okay? So that is a C terminal product. That is the end of phase one reaction. Okay, and what also happens at this point is that this double bond gets broken and there's a unstable covalent intermediate formed between serine 195, the carbonyl group of the peptide and glycine 193. Okay, and that's a very unstable intermediate. So that gets broken down relatively quickly, or very quickly. Okay, but that's not the reaction over, that's just the first phase done. And what we need to do now is we need to regenerate the enzyme, because by definition enzymes can be used over and over again. Um, so how that happens is we need another proton, because we have a proton that was um, donated to make this phase 1 C-terminal product. And this is where the water comes in. Okay, so we're about to start phase 2. Water is going to come into this reaction and it's going to be positioned in the active site just as the peptide bond was positioned in phase 1. And histidine 57 again is going to act as a general base and it's going to take a proton from water. Okay. So that's a proton from water moving on to histidine 57. Um, again, there's going to be a nucleophilic attack on this carbonyl group. There's going to be another unstable uh, covalent intermediate formed. And you're going to get the rest of the water molecule is going to attach to create the second product the second product which is the phase 2 product and it's an N-terminal product okay we're nearly done we just need to regenerate the serine 195 so histidine 57 is going to then donate its protein to serine and that's the reaction completed and we're ready to go again with another peptide because the serine 195 has its proton back the peptide has been cleaved so instead of being one part we have two and the enzyme is ready to go and catalyze the reaction. So in summary, in phase one, the peptide bond is positioned in the active site. Histidine 57 acts as a general brace, takes this proton from serine and uses that to perform a nucleophilic attack on a carbonyl group, splitting the peptide bond. And then histidine 57 acts as a general acid um, and protein protonates this leaving group of the phase 1 C-terminal product. In phase 2, water comes in and again, the proton from water is used as a, a general base. Histidine 57 acts as a general base using the proton from water. The um, COH goes to the, produce the carboxyl group on the N-terminal product. Um, and histidine 57 again acts as a general acid to regenerate the serine. Okay, I hope that helps you understand the uh, catalytic mechanism of chemotrypsin a bit better. And if you do have a molecular model kit, 
try building it yourself because that really makes you think um, and you have to work out what's going on each step of the reaction. <laughs>